You know, we've been experimenting with so many different finishes now that I think it's about time for a bit of a clean. So in this video, we're gonna be experimenting with a traditional soap finish. Let's get going. So a soap finish is something that I've never ever tried before, but I have seen a fellow student at Rykert would do before and it left the like most smoothest, softest surface you can ever imagine. So I did a little bit more research into it and it's also something that Chris Schwarz is doing quite a lot of at the moment. Because the nice thing about this finish is that it doesn't have any like solvents and things that are gonna kill you in it. It's just a natural product that you're gonna dissolve in water and apply to wood. And this is a finish that you'll see on a lot of um, Danish modern furniture and possibly even traditional Danish furniture. I haven't done a lot of research into it, but that's commonly where you'll sort of see it. Um, it's not a particularly durable finish. So if you're one of those people like myself, to be honest, that can't be asked to reapply finishes over the years, then this might not be the one for you, but you could just apply it once and leave it and just let it naturally wear. It's entirely up to you, of course. This is an experimental series. We're gonna see what happens. So first thing we need to do is boil a kettle. I bought a kettle especially for this. And apparently the mix for this is, well, you've got a choice. You can either do a one-to-one -one mix of one part soap, one part water, and that kind of gives you a more of a waxy substance. So you kind of get more of a build when you apply it to the surface, or you can do a four to one mix. That's four parts water to one part soap. And that will give you more of a sort of liquid finish, well not a liquid finish, but more of a pasty finish that you can apply. And this is information that I'm getting from a video that Chris Schwarz did. I'll put a link to it in the description. He's always a good presenter, so it's always one that's worth watching. But I'm gonna try it for myself here. So there's our soap. In fact, let's get the kettle boiling. So I'm gonna do it four cups of water. Okay, there's four cups of that. Then we'll do a little bit extra to account for evaporation. So while that's going, we need to grate up this soap and turn it into flakes. So I've got a little mini grater here, and um, yeah, we need one cup of this stuff. And as I'm approaching this one cup of soap flakes, what I'm doing is just compressing it down every now and then because what I'm aware is as I'm grating this soap into here, in fact, a lot of what's in this jug is just air and space between each of these flakes. So we need to make sure we get a true one cup of this stuff or at least as close to that as possible. And I just grated my hand. Now, red tinted soap finish, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? There we go. I think by the time that compresses down, pretty compact. I mean, that's most of that bar of soap, to be honest. But that's about one cup we've got there, just over, I think. I think it's probably better to have a slightly thicker consistency than it is to have a slightly thinner one in this case. I don't really know, to be honest. We're just going to make it up as we go along and just see what happens. That's the fun of this series. So, here we go. I made a right old mess on my way. It's not a mess, actually. I'm cleaning it. It's soap. Right, so we're gonna put all that into a mixy bowl and then we'll mix our four cups of water into there. The old wooden plane blade. Who's been subscribed long enough to when I made this wooden plane blade to try and shave wood with it? Sorry, that was a bit of a spoiler alert to those of you who haven't seen that video. Link's in the top corner if you're interested anyway. So this is making a pretty minging green looking substance. I hope that's not the plane blade doing that. You know what? I'm gonna put a bit more in there just for good luck. Now I definitely can't use fingerprint scanners anymore. Right, and then with that fully dissolved, we will decant it into this lovely glass jar. That doesn't look the same color as the video. <laughs> um, looks like Shrek, doesn't it? All right, so then that can live up on the shelf behind me for the next 24 hours and we'll wait for it to harden up. Hopefully it does. And look, I've just noticed the reason that water may have turned green is because look, I, I was stirring it with this end here it's nice and green up here, but it's gone back to its original orangey color down here. If this isn't an experimental finish, then I don't know what is. I've basically just st stained my finish with lignum oil. <laughs> 24 hours later. Right, so for some reason, it's cooled, but it still hasn't hardened up. It's still very much liquid. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Like, in the video that Chris Schwarz did, it hardened up. Like, as soon as it cooled down, it made sort of like a, well, he called it a mayonnaise-like texture. But this is not. Um, <laughs> uh, right, I'm gonna start again with this. I think I'm gonna use one and a half bars of soap and maybe two and a half cups of water. I'm really gonna bring the ratios closer together on this because this is nowhere near. Right, so the old kettle's boiling. Now let's start grating this soap again. 
I reckon it's because in Chris Schwarz's video he used flakes instead of um, grating it on a grater like this, although he did say you could grate it. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing wrong here, but at a guess, I think what it might be is that there's just so much air between all of these shavings of soap that I'm creating here, that it's not actually one cup that I'm producing, even though I compress it down quite a lot to make it sort of read as one cup, I can always compress it a little bit more than that. And the patronizing thing about all of this is in that video where he explains how to do it, he says that this finish is hard to get wrong. Um, I've kind of fallen at the first stage. <laughs> about one and a quarter bars of soap down now. And just to demonstrate how much air is in this, you can really mush it back down. We're gonna do this all, we're gonna do it all. Ah, hand cramp. Ah, oh, there we go, right. That has gotta be enough. That into a mixing bowl. So one and a half bars of soap, I'm gonna experiment with, let's put two cups in first. Use some scissors this time to um, prevent the liquid from turning green. It's like risotto. No, it's not like risotto whatsoever. I don't know what I'm talking about. What's this like? I recognize this. Like, con ah, no, it's like sticky rice. That's what it is. That's, that'll probably do. Like the fact that I'm able to draw bubbles from it kind of leads me to believe I do have enough soap to water in there. So I guess the best we can do at this point is just wait. And um, we'll wait till tomorrow that is and see what happens then. Um, it certainly looks like it's a thicker consistency and there's more I don't know, I feel inside of me that this time it's gonna work. Um, we'll have to see, let's see what happens tomorrow. <sighs> it hasn't worked, it's still liquidy. Granted, it's a little bit more cloudy than it was before, but I don't get it. In Chris Schwarz's video, he dissolves it, leave it overnight, and then you've got mayonnaise in the morning. This, I haven't. <sighs> so, we're gonna do a quick Amazon one-click order for some soap flakes, as opposed to solid soap that I have to dissolve in here. Thank you, Jeff Bezos, for one-click ordering. Boop. Right, now we wait. Delivery. I'm trying to make this look cool by like ripping it off in one sweep. Oh, sod it. Soap flakes. Right, I'm feeling hopeful for this one. So we're gonna do one cup of the new soap flakes that I have that I'm not going to have to grate this time. Just a nice privilege. Ooh, these look tasty. That's just over one cup into the bowl. Then we need four cups of boiling water. Four cups. Okay, that seems mostly dissolved. It doesn't seem too different to what it was before, um, but I am hoping that this is gonna be somewhat different. So this mix does look a little bit different. It's creating some pretty cool effects like as I turn it. So I feel like something different is happening here and also some of the spills that I got on the workbench it's left me now that it's cooled down with a questionable looking substance um, but it looks pretty similar to what the um, instruction was in the video and yeah it's like a proper paste sort of thing. It smells really nice. So I'm feeling pretty hopeful about this one. So on the shelf behind me that would have been the time when I'd drop it wouldn't it and we'll let that cool down and hopefully we will have the soap finish ready to go after all this time. Approximately 10 hours later. It worked. I 
have no idea what cinematic shots of um, soap is going <laughs> to look like, but we'll see what we can do in the editing stages. So what I've done is sanded and planed, or planed and sanded, or planed then set. A bit of ash, nice and smooth, all the way up to 240 grit. That's about as high as it needs, feels nice and soft. And we're gonna apply some of this soap to it. Oh, I can't wait, it's been a long time coming for this. So I actually couldn't be bothered to wait for this to dry fully over 24 hours. So I just put it in a tub full of cold water and put this jar straight into it and it's hardened it within about half an hour or so, really quick. Oh, that feels amazing. It's actually quite tough. What's this texture? How could I explain that? I've definitely felt that texture before, but I can't think what it feels <laughs> like. Oh, it feels really cool. I just sort of slop it on there like that. Look, I'm cleaning my hands at the same time. <laughs> this is great. Never have I been this carefree about applying a finish before. You know what, just let's do that. <laughs> this is great. There we go. That looks right, doesn't it? So it's been that long since I watched the original video that I can't actually remember <laughs> how long to leave this for. Because I've had so many failed attempts at making this mix. Let it stand for a couple of minutes, then take a clean rag and wipe off the excess. Let it dry for an hour and then sand the surface. I use 320 grit sanding sponge. Cool. Okay, so yeah, it still feels rough, which is to be expected. This solution of soap has water in it, so it's raised the grain a little bit, which, yeah, but I should have seen that coming, really. It'll be the second coat that makes it nice and soft. So what I'll need to do is, once this dry, get the 320 grit, knock off that raised grain, and then lay on another bit after that. Right, so I've put on about three coats now and it is starting to build up a little bit of a sheen. I'm being admittedly a little bit impatient between each of the coats. I'm leaving it about a half hour to dry before applying the next. I probably could leave it a little bit further just to make sure the water is fully evaporating out of it, but it seems to be pretty good. The only thing I'm a little bit unsure about at the moment is the fact that it's kind of turning the wood a yellowy green color. Obviously with bare ash, it's kind of a yellowy pink color. This is turning it yellowy green. Um, so not entirely sure what I feel about that. It looks quite good in Chris Schwartz's video when he did it on oak. He said that it kind of turned it like a dull gray color, but this it's, I don't know. It's a bit weird really, but it is starting to feel pretty nice and soft and smooth, which is one of the main features of a soap finish. I just keep checking the uh, sheen on it. It's like, it's literally dead flat. It, you can't see any shine from it whatsoever. Almost looks like there's nothing on it whatsoever until you flip it round and you see the color difference. But yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is leave it another day or so just to make sure that that surface is properly dry and then we'll see what we're left with. Four to six days later. All right, it's so coming back a few days later to look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. The green tinge seems to have gone, but it's definitely left it with more of a sort of desaturated finish. Definitely looks a lot more gray than what it used to be. This is more pink, this is more gray, but it does feel oh, very lovely. What's nice about this, it doesn't feel smooth and plasticky like lacquer, but it just feels like very soft wood. God, I hope no one overheard me saying that. I'm gonna apply another layer. And there we go. We got there in the end. <laughs> how much experimentation did that take or how much mess ups, cock ups did that take? But that is the traditional soap finish and it feels lovely. It is definitely the softest finish I've ever come across. It feels very soft, but natural at the same time. So you don't lose the properties of the wood. The only downside to this is that it's not very durable. So if you're using this for a high wear piece of furniture, like a chair, a table, for example, you could have to reapply it like quarterly or something like that. As for the overall look of it, like I said, it kind of desaturates the entire face. So you don't get as much of the yellows and contrasts and things that you do with oils and things like that. This just kind of makes it a completely flat finish, no shine whatsoever, and just cuts down the contrast and everything. So if you're looking for a minimal look, 
this may be the one that you're looking for. But there we go, that is a soap finish. If you're planning on doing this yourself, I would recommend watching Chris Schwarz's video. I'll put a link up here for that and also another one in the description as well because this video is kind of a experimentation kind of thing, whereas his is more of a instructional one. So definitely have a look at that first. Good luck with it. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.